Welcome to the Sackcloth and Ashes newscast. Well, friends, last week, I want to share this story. Remember the meteorologist in Mexico? He had reported on his Facebook page that a mysterious metallic orb fell from the sky onto a tree in Veracruz, Mexico. Do you remember all the buzz and the hype over that big story? Well, he had written these three consecutive Facebook posts about it, and in one post, he, writ he had written that it had a secret code and, and possibly it had valuable information inside. His name is Cedro Cano Luna, and he contacted the Mexican Navy to study this orb, and now, mum's the word, no one's heard anything about it since then. Now, he did follow up that original Facebook post with more information, and he wrote that it should not be opened or tried to be opened, a specialized team at the Secretary of the Navy of Mexico and or the Secretary of National Defense needs to collect it and turn it in for special study. He also mentioned that it could be radioactive and he said that there was a special code on the outside of the sphere but no hole or slit through which it could be opened. And then he went on to write, and this is the part that really surprised me the most. He wrote, these spheres have a timing mechanism that at the right time, they open by themselves and show the valuable information they have inside. Now, I just wondered how he knew this information about spheres. Where did he learn this at? Is that something that meteorologists learn in school? Or where did he learn it at? He said that the final destination of the sphere will be beyond our borders. Well, ever since the computer age, children have learned about orbs through cartoons, uh, video games, science fiction movies. And what exactly is an orb? Well, no one really has a concrete definition, but this meteorologist is calling the object that fell into the tree an orb. Now, some think that their ghost, which we know is not true because the Bible says that when someone dies, they either go to heaven or they go to hell. So that, that idea is out the window. And the other common idea is that they are these orbs are disembodied spirits of devils uh, or Nephilim. And the Nephilim are the offspring of the mating of the watchers. That's this group of angels that were sent from God to guide mankind. Now these fallen angels, their children, well the fallen angels, they had uh, sexual relations with human women. And that's in Genesis 6, 4. And uh, it's also in the book of Enoch if you want to read about that. But I believe that these are some of the spirits that roam the earth. When the children of the watchers died, their spirits were not redeemable. They couldn't go to heaven. They couldn't go to hell. They're trapped here with mankind until God closes out this age and the next and then eventually sends all evil to the lake of fire. So friends, what is all this hype about orbs? Why have they been creeping into every segment of society? Well, one theory is that they need a host body to live in and so they're waiting for the best place to reside. Now, two pop culture names came to my mind. The one is called Resident Evil. It's a video game and the movie Ghost in a Shell. And I don't recommend either one. But Resident Evil, it's from Japan. It's known as Biohazard. Uh, it's a Japanese horror game series and it consists of survival horror and first and third person shooter games in an environment with zombies and other dark creatures. And Ghost in a Shell is a futuristic movie where the main character, a woman, a human, and she's the very first of her kind. She was a cyber-enhanced uh, female, a super soldier, and she was devoted to stopping the world's most dangerous criminals, the kind of criminals that hack into people's minds and control them. Well, her character in the movie was adapted to be able to stop it. And as she prepared to face a new enemy, she discovered that her life was stolen instead of being saved. So, friends, wow, I don't recommend either of those, by the way, Resident Evil or Ghost in a Shell, but I'm just saying that there is so much predictive programming out there, and even just 
in the title of things. Now, these demonic spirits and these Nephilim spirits, they do have the same agenda today as they did back then, to have a host body to live in. There is nothing new under the sun. They are seeking immortality, and uh, they're not going to stop until they achieve that. But we know God has his own plans. Well, friends, I want to look at something else today that might, may surprise you, or maybe it won't. But have you heard of these, or do you have these in your home office? They're called co-orbs. And the creator of these orbs actually uh, wants you to touch them, the opposite of that meteorologist in the first story. He said, don't touch that orb. If you should see an orb, the orb in that tree, don't touch it. But the creators of this, these desktop lamps are in the shape of a sphere. They light up with a message from a coworker. They're called co-orbs. Now the goal of co-orb is to foster remote workspace gratitude with an internet of things technology. And the designers of this, they use a messaging thread to spice up somebody's uh, day who's working in a remote office at home. Now, since the pandemic, we know that interpersonal work communication is no longer the same. And a smart Internet of Things device that brings thank you messages springs to life through a plug-in application. Now, the app will automatically screen for cue words in the message thread and then prompt the employee to light up their co-worker's co-orb. So you could be in Texas and your co-worker could be in Alaska and you could send them a message. And the message, the, actually the sender will see an animation of what the experience will look like for the receiver to make the experience more meaningful. The orb lamp that sits right beside your computer will then light up and then you have to touch the orb and then you receive your coworker's message. So in this story, there's an orb that they're promoting you to touch and you have to reach out, touch the orb for the experience. Now that story, it reminded me of another cultural phenomenon, Pokemon. In Pokemon, you're encouraged to catch and train monsters, pocket monsters, and they catch them into their Pokeball. It looks very much like that orb that fell on the tree there in Mexico, these Pokeballs. Uh, and that, also, that looked like an orb to me. So anyways, everyone in the game is a Pokemon trainer. And the goal of the, of the Pokemon game is to become a Pokemon master. And these pocket monsters that people catch... They all live inside the Pokeball. Now, if you're older and you don't know about this, like me, uh, I had to research this thing out a little bit, but listen to this. There are two ideas of these Pokeballs from Pokemon, and one is that inside the Pokeball is an alternate reality or an alternate universe. Now, the other idea is that these pocket monsters, they all live comfortably inside the Pokeball until they're called forth to battle other trainers who have pokey or uh, pocket monsters inside their Pokeball. So, but for the point of the discussion is that once you catch the Pokemon, they shrink down and they can be carried in your pocket anywhere. And you can carry these creatures, you know, forever with you wherever you go. Now, now you may not see where I'm going with this topic today. The disembodied spirits of the Nephilim or these other evil spirits roam in the earth. They have been training the past two generations to go and catch them all, to be entertained with something that is harmful. And I just pray God have mercy on us and our uh, children. I was asked by the Lord once to speak about the Pikachu character uh, in a church gathering after he had showed me this Pikachu in a dream. And he showed me this cute little yellow creature. And you know the one that has that little lightning bolt tail. And he was hiding behind a corner with a clipboard. And he would peek in on me regularly and he would take notes. He would peek in and he would write things down on his clipboard. The Pikachu spirits are monitoring spirits. They are peeking at you, Pikachu. Now, if you think that the division in the body of Christ was intense 
over that the Donald Trump presidency, or if you think that the division in the body of Christ was big during the big vaccine dilemma, you just watch someone who's passionate about Pokemon when you tell them that the characters are actually demonic spirits. I mean, the Bible says that there will be hatred amongst family members in the last days, and I have experienced this over Pokemon myself. Family members who to this very day will not speak to me because I spoke ill of their beloved Pokemon. So friends, just pray for them. Pray for them to know that Jesus Christ is Lord and pray that none of our family members will touch anything from the demonic realm, especially as the devil tries to make everything so cute and so cuddly like Pikachu or amusing and encouraging like those co-orbs. And there always has been an agenda. The Bible says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. And the great delusion of the devil is coming and is actually here. The Bible says that the Antichrist will come and he will overcome the saints in the tribulation. So know what you believe in, friends. Know who died for you on the cross. Be ready to lay down your life for Jesus Christ. And don't argue over divisive topics like Pokemon or orbs and the like, but pray that your loved ones will have a sincere relationship with Jesus Christ. Hey, educate them when they're receptive, but don't go around forcing your beliefs on anyone. It's counterproductive. God is the only one who can save a soul. So I hope this information about orbs will give you something to pray about and expect more orbs in the news in the future orbs and ufos and aliens because the government will try to make satan and his angelic army look like the saviors of the world so friends just shine your light while you can shine your light okay all right well thank you for watching today until next time